Hi, I'm Chris Bruce. I'm the Managing Director of Global Reach, and we are providers of software and services for Wi-Fi operators to connect users seamlessly and securely. And I'm also very proud to represent Global Reach on the board of the Wireless Broadband Alliance, um, having done so for the best part of 10 years with my previous company, uh, British Telecom. So I see open roaming as a real game changer. I've been involved in Wi-Fi roaming uh, and interoperability for many years uh, in different ways and different guises. And the WBA has done a fantastic job working with the Wi-Fi Alliance, building the foundations for, for roaming, but we've never quite tipped the, tipped the scales and, and, and really scaled the, the number of connections and the number of roaming um, parties. And the reason for that is really that we've never had that enforceable building blocks and standards that, that could really scale this thing. And I see open roaming now as the mechanism to do that. Traditionally, uh, roaming has been between operators, that have uh, been used to the GSMA way, way of doing things. And that's been great. And they've tended to be uh, large operators with large customers uh, groups and roaming with other operators and their networks. What Wi-Fi roaming through, federated roaming through open roaming does is bring in the enterprise, bring in the venue into that environment so they can easily participate in this federated roaming opportunity without a huge amount of, of work. And we in Global Reach see our role as making that easy for venues to participate. Our experience of working with both operators and venues means that we're ideally placed to manage that identity management and access management role to um, allow operators and venues to work together. Well, I think there are three clear use cases for open roaming, and there are similar but different uh, commercial models that I think will drive the, uh, the commercial impetus for open roaming. The first is what you might call the traditional venue, public Wi-Fi. Um, and, and you could say, well, we've had, had seamless connection to public Wi-Fi venues for many years. Well, we have, but not um, in a way that is so seamless uh, and allows many, many uh, operators or identity providers to seamlessly connect to a venue's network and then for the venue to get something in return. And it may be offload uh, in, in that kind of model, but it might be something a bit more subtle, like exchange of um, anonymized analytics information within GDPR rules, of course, but adding value to uh, how the venue manages the environment and engages with its customers. So that's the first use case. Secondly, is the more traditional um, mobile data offload and, and Global Reach has lots of experience in this area. But what we've not been able to do um, it is do uh, allow many, many hundreds, perhaps thousands of sites and venues to participate in this. Uh, it's tended to be bilateral uh, so far. So what this does is allow the mobile operator or, or the MVNO or MSO to have access to increased coverage or uh, increased capacity, particularly in urban areas, accessing uh, enterprise networks that are probably largely underutilized and, and get it, making a better use of, of that economic asset at a time when networks are often congested or, or would like improved coverage indoors. And then the final case is um, more of an enterprise wireless LAN case for guest access and visitors. We've all been to a, you know, visit another company and arrived there and wanted to connect to the Wi-Fi. And often it's quite a performance trying to get the, the password or the code, and then trying to decipher exactly what it means. And by the time you've connected, well, actually, you're ready to be collected from reception and, and you missed the opportunity to, to get online. And, and, and this is a use case where it's more about employees, contractors, visitors, guests coming to an enterprise building and being easy to connect uh, without all that friction, taking away the work from the IT department or, or the front of house reception folks by connecting um, into the corporate directory or the reservation system. And again, with Global Reach, we have experience of enabling that. And we think all three use cases are ones that can be uh, either discrete or in fact, be combined to add value to this federated roaming consortium. So this is the year for Wi-Fi 6. Uh, it already was offered great opportunities in terms of the improved functionality of Wi-Fi 6 um, equipment in terms of higher throughput, lower latency, uh, improved um, 
uh, user experience in terms of data rates and improved use of spectrum. But what's taking it to a whole new level has been the move by regulators around the world to um, make available the six gigahertz band. Uh, initially in the US through an, um, an announcement by the FCC there, uh, and now more recently with South Korea. And at the same time, uh, Ofcom in the UK is also consulting on the use of uh, six gigahertz and part of the five gigahertz band. This is really, really exciting. If you look at the states, this has increased the, the amount of spectrum available for uh, Wi-Fi some five-fold. This is a huge increase when you think of uh, the number of users and use cases in the five gigahertz and the 2.4 gig space. It really makes uh, applications such as um, augmented reality, virtual reality, really quite um, realistic at a, at a really affordable rate. Uh, in a way that 5G new radio reaching indoors, I think, will, will struggle. So the opportunity is for operators to look at this, this technology, which is really carrier grade, um, and see how it can use it in combination with, in coexistence uh, and co-integration with, with 5G to deliver um, exceptional service for users um, at, a, at an affordable rate. And, and frankly, the COVID experience is going to have both uh, obviously a health impact, but also an economic impact for all of our countries around the world. And I suspect that many operators are going to have to take note of the economic environment they're facing and see how they can deliver the, the promise of 5G, but perhaps uh, with a heterogeneous network that uses 5G outdoors, but uses a lower cost base, but high performance equipment in the form of uh, Wi-Fi 6. And for global reach, we think this is all goodness, and we have a role to play to make that seamless connection uh, available to all users. Well, I think the first thing to say is that you know there are reasons behind why Apple is uh, reputed to be going down this route, and at this, this at this stage today, um, this is in beta trial. So, assuming that it goes through, um, the the motivation behind Apple's move, I believe, is to uh, protect data pr privacy for users, which is of course a good thing. Um, however, in, in this world, we're, we're balancing uh, data privacy, ease of use, device security, and a number of other things. So the effect of this um, so-called um, Mac randomization is that um, from the, the next release of, of iOS, if this goes ahead, um, the device uh, returning to a Wi-Fi hotspot after 24-hour period will, will generate a new Mac address which means that the hotspot won't be able to remember what this device that this device came back before. So um, it's there to, to, to prevent, um, uh, as I say, breaches of, if you like, data privacy. But the reality then means is the users then got to re-authenticate. Uh, and if this is a traditional captive portal with a password and, and username, this could be a bit like uh, Wi-Fi Groundhog Day, that every day you've got to go back and put in that um, uh, the, that information uh, like you've never done it before. Now, uh, us in the, in the WBA and in the Wi-Fi industry know that there are ways around this. Uh, ultimately, I think the answer is Hotspot 2 Passpoint, which uh, stores the credentials on, on the device uh, and provides a secure connection over an encrypted radio link. So there's lots of benefits for that. However, we also know that um, unless this is uh, a profile that's downloaded by a cellular operator onto a SIM, there are challenges around um, user onboarding of profiles. It's not as simple as we would all like it to be. Um, so for us in Global Reach, we're gonna work through with our venue partners to explore which, which combination of user journeys will best meet their users' needs. You know, is it an environment where the same users are gonna come back daily on the way to their commute or, or buy a cup of coffee? Or is this once in uh, three months or so when they uh, go to an airport. So depending on that journey, we will we will recommend different routes to um, manage the balance between privacy um, and ease of use and convenience uh, as we work through this. But no doubt about it, anybody who runs a, a Wi-Fi network today really needs to uh, get their heads around this and understand that this will have a, a big impact because obviously iOS and Apple has a large market share and it will affect all their devices uh, in the most recent um, uh, OS releases uh, from the autumn. 
So uh, if anybody uh, wants help with that, then uh, feel free to reach out to Global Reach and we'll see if we can help you. Yeah, so this has obviously been a, a, a strange year for all of us. And um, in my contribution to the uh, WBA's webinar series this, this year um, online, I, I yesterday presented on what I thought were the big impacts for the Wi-Fi industry, and this, this affects all of us. Uh, and it ranges from um, how users will behave uh, in terms of going out to, to venues and, and other outdoor places, um, how they will want to use um, uh, tracking and tracing to, to uh, prevent the spread of the virus. Um, but moving on into other things such as uh, uh, the challenges around Mac randomization and the great opportunities created by the WBA's open roaming program and the convergence of Wi-Fi 6 and the fantastic Wi-Fi 6 trials that are showing us all how this, this technology can be deployed. For Global Reach, um, we've seen a renewed interest in how to, to deploy Wi-Fi networks with uh, the optimum user experience, and we see open roaming as a great opportunity for um, the, the, the cellular industry and IDPs to um, expand their footprint without deploying that capex and we are ready and able and working with uh, parties right now to make that happen